Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta faced off once again in the Premier League, where Manchester City hosted Arsenal. City were looking to continue their recovery from an opening day loss, whilst Arsenal were looking to avoid three defeats in a row. And in the end, City came away with a comfortable 5-0 win, thanks to a Ferran Torres double, Jesus, Rodri and Ilkay Gundogan, whilst Xhaka was sent off for Arsenal. City also crushed Arsenal on XG, 4.47 to 0.12, with the XG time map showing that even before the sending off, City were ahead. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of the formations, with Arteta initially lining up in a 5-4-1, while City as usual were a 4-3-3 on paper, as you can see on our video sponsor, the One Football app. One Football is the best football app in the world, giving you even more than just formations, but also stats, news, and transfer updates for your favorite teams and players. The best part is you can get it completely free through the link in the description below. Let's start with City in possession, and they dominated the ball even before the sending off, and this just got worse after the sending off. City shape when building from deep was one of the keys. Arsenal's pressing shape when using a high block shifted from a pretty distinct 5-4-1 to more of a 5-3-2, with Saka coming in off the right-hand side to be a forward. And City's adaptability and problem solving in these deep regions was key to their ability to keep possession and punish Arsenal. Firstly, Edison was aggressive with the ball, pushing quite high up so that City now had a 3 vs 2 advantage against Arsenal's front 2 instantly. Edison doing this also meant that Rodri didn't have to be the man to drop into the back line and could be an extra number in the midfield. Arsenal's front three remained relatively flat, and instead, Odegaard pushed onto Rodri to try and stop him from getting on the ball and beginning the next phase of play. And the fullbacks would naturally be the free men, but down Arsenal's left hand side, Smith Rowe tended to remain wider so that he could immediately press Walker when he received it, whilst Tierney could remain deeper on Jesus. So, First, City adapted by having Bernardo Silva essentially operate as a second pivot alongside Rodri, so he could receive, turn, and then look to play the ball higher. So soon, Smith Rowe couldn't cover both of these men anymore and had to commit to pressing Bernardo, freeing up Walker to receive the pass from Edison. Or, if Tierney pressed, it meant that there would be one less defensive number deep, so Kolasinac had to be pushed out. This could be part of the reason Arteta used natural fullbacks as the wide centre-backs, as moving to cover the wide regions was a common phenomenon. And Arsenal's midfield shape, with the right side midfielder Odegaard covering Rodri in the centre, meant that there was more room on the right of their midfield. And Cancelo from left back was perfectly positioned to take advantage of this, as his on the ball ability means he can receive under pressure, turn, and begin the next phase. And Cedric could be drawn infield with Cancelo, so all of a sudden, Arsenal's compact back five was now more of a shaky and spread out back three. And now, Ferran Torres could make all the difference, as after Arsenal was shifted across, he could drop in to receive the ball in midfield, as Holding couldn't follow and leave a gaping hole in midfield. So now, Ferran could turn and often look to play in Grealish for a 1 vs 1 with Chambers, which usually only ended one way. The third goal is a perfect example. Cancelo comes in to be an extra pivot, as there is less protection there, and you can see how Arsenal's back five is now a three. Ferran causes the overload and receives, as Holding can't follow. Ferran receives and turns and plays Grealish in for a one vs one with Chambers. Grealish drives past Chambers and cuts the ball back for an easy finish from Jesus. When City were higher up, Arsenal reverted to more of a 5-4-1 mid-block, with only Aubameyang high meaning that City had a natural 2 vs 1 advantage with just their centre-backs.
so Walker and Cancelo could operate as quite wide midfielders alongside Rodri and maintain the width, which would still allow them to shift the ball rapidly, forcing Arsenal's midfield to shift, while still allowing Bernardo and Gundogan to push high into the half spaces as a front five. And City's fluid shape would cause the midfield problems, as at any time, any of these men could drop into the midfield to cause an overload. We often saw the pivots being drawn into pressing one of the three, and the centre-backs would then have to follow the men between the lines, creating space in the defence where City could operate. And once Arsenal were down to 10, they looked to shift to a compact 5-3-1. And as we saw in the Chelsea-Liverpool game, when down to 10, it is ideal to protect zone 14 and have three compact centre-backs. But City changed their shape to a 2-4-4 to consistently manipulate Arsenal's shape. This could be a front six at times when the full-backs pushed high. But the general idea was that the pivots could draw Arsenal's midfield central, giving Zinchenko and Cancelo plenty of space to operate wider. And if the midfielders tried to come across to cover, City had plenty of men between the lines who could be found to create opportunities. But when the Arsenal defence was more concerned about cutting out the central space, it also led to problems, as it seems that City identified this makeshift back three's weakness in the air. So plenty of central numbers and space out wide meant that they could get plenty of crosses in, leading to some chances. Overall, the result was never really in doubt, with City consistently finding solutions to Arsenal, whilst Arsenal were more tactically static when it came to adapting on the pitch. City will be pleased with the result, and more than anything, Arsenal will be pleased that their tough open day fixtures are done with. But what did you make of this match? Of course, these were just a few of the tactics on display, so drop anything else you notice down below. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. And a special thanks to my patrons including Yusuf Halim McFurry, Additive Guru and Zane Barber. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.